Okay? So that Canada Revenue AGD project descriptions that I'm going to propose we go through very quickly and which are all available at our website, rdbase.net. For those of you who have the handout bags, it should be easy to remember. We're going to look at a, the first project was developed in 2004 and it really helped the process along as we went in there. Okay? The next project, series of projects were all released in 1999 in conjunction with a group called CADA, Canadian Advanced Technology Association. We had some workshops in 98 and 99 I was part of, and as a result came up with these five examples, which really helped put the system back on track, in my opinion, and provides excellent examples to claimants that we use all the time. And very recently, in November 2008, they released a new form with an example of how to complete the form, and that was, in fact, an improvement of data warehousing, another software project. So we have a nice series of projects that we can use to illustrate to claimants what's a technological advancement in the field of software infor information technology and what's more of a business advancement. Okay? Part of the guidelines that they provide in here is that they talk about what are the key constraints. These are the issues that they use to train the Canada Revenue Agency reviewers to look for, saying these are the issues that are typically eligible. These are indicative of advancements in computer science as opposed to the business process. Issues like interoperability. Hey, I have components from different vendors. They're closed source. I don't know how to make them work together. I have to go write my own code and try to figure that out. Strong basis of eligibility there. Conformance to standards. You know, we may have various standards. We're going to illustrate this as examples. That may put constraints or restrictions on you on what you can and can't do. Again, creating technological uncertainty. Service-oriented architectures might be an example or, or any number of things. Performance itself. This is one of the great ones. A lot of people say, Dave, you know, uh, you say I mean extremely accurate measurements and quantification and uh, I'm trying to do something that wasn't done before. You know, it's hard to quantify that. But I say, well, listen, do you have memory issues, response time issues? Do you have a footprint that you want to look at? I say, oh yeah, no, no, we got all those things. Great. Just tell me about them. Even though that's not forefront in your mind, put it forefront in your mind because those are the issues that generate the eligibility here. Okay? Concurrency. Hey, now we have multi-core processors. You're running transactions concurrently. It can create all kinds of problems. Uh, again, threading, deadlocks, races, all kinds of issues. If you're dealing with those, typically eligible for SRDD credits. The footprint itself, how much memory do we use, all kinds of stuff. Again, the nice parameters, the, the quantifiables that we're looking for at the end of the day. Scalability, stability, use of third party or legacy components. Okay? You know, Saver system was a great one. The airline industry had these old 386, 286 computers that they were using until recently and they were making people write code saying, hey, we don't want to replace all the hardware. You'll write the code to make it work. These, again, can create the constraints that will create the basis of eligibility for the tax credit system. First of the examples, the 1994 example. And again, I'm going to go through these quick just to illustrate the principles in question, how we apply that square triangle circle. So what we're told is that the company has an existing database management system. It works well with small data sets, but has excessive access time, which we quantify, greater than 30 seconds. On large data sets, again, quantified, greater than 1 gigabytes. You know, I say a lot of software guys laugh at this now. They say, 30 seconds, are you kidding? My clients wait more than three seconds, they're already hitting escape, you know, control, alt, delete, whatever. The goal here is to improve the database method to double the speed. So at the end of the day, what they said is the key issues here, the key technological uncertainty looked at whether the relational environment that we're in, so you know, do we have a sequential database, relational database, how do we organize the data, is the key issue that they said, hey, we're aware of different data models, in particular one called the packet access model from the communications industry. And we have a hypothesis that if we ran the same kind of queries through this model, it might be faster than the relational model that we're using. So we're told that they run a series of tests, we're not told how many, 1,000, 2,000, whatever, certain number of queries, and that unexpected to them, roughly half of the queries were faster under the old method, and roughly half of the queries were faster under the new method. So what they did is they said, well, let's try to work backwards and figure out what's causing these queries to work faster under one method or another to characterize them and then for each type of query to use the most appropriate method, the faster method. And by doing so, by combining what they call a hybrid approach, they achieve their response time. And the can of revenue says that new method, because what they're looking for is this new method of characterizing data and applying it to information technology is an advancement. This project would be eligible. Going on to the 1999 project, so they start to go in a little more depth. That was a nice, very generic project with not a lot of details because it was meant to be timeless. So they wanted you to read it in 94 and in 2004 and 2014, still kind of make some sense, not be outdated. Here we're talking about <coughs> combining a new system to replace an existing mainframe system for reservations. 
that the real issues, the problem on the technology was the ability to combine an SQL database and a transaction server. <laughs> they were saying that when they first set it up, the interaction of the database and the transaction server itself was resulting in record locking because of the granularity of the data. What we're told is their first activity was to contact the vendor himself, ask them. They had no solution. So I'm saying that's a great evidence of no standard practice, off-the-shelf solution. You ask the vendor, they don't know. They say, hey, we don't support you. You shouldn't be doing this in this environment. Keep that email. CRA say it's worth its weight in gold to you as evidence that you took reasonable steps. We're told then that they went into three prototype solutions. We're not told a lot about them, but the fact is they didn't go right to a solution. They looked at different alternatives, which to both myself and the Canada Revenue Agency is indicative that we're experimenting, right? Experimental development project, experiment with alternatives to determine what the best is, probably eligible activity. Lastly, we're told that ultimately they achieved success by a combination of connection pooling and direct record locking techniques. What would be relevant to me is what didn't work. What do we know doesn't work and why? The end result, or the end <coughs> solution, is completely irrelevant in many cases. Okay? And I would often tell clients, you do not have to give the Cadbury or the Caramel secret away, because often they're worried about that. The government is more interested in what didn't work and why you would not do that again, what you learned from it, than what actually did work at the end of the day. Okay? So results, to me, are less important than conclusions, unless the result illustrate Potential conclusions. Hey, this was way off what we expected. Let's talk about that a little more. Why? Next project. This is one where we have network failure problems. We're trying to combine products of three different vendors. So again, we have interoperability as an issue here. Right away, Siri's going to say interoperability. Yes, this is likely in the realm of what we're looking for. Let's look a little deeper. Our objective here is to facilitate 500 high-speed access ports with 1,750 concurrent transactions and we want to get a maximum loss of 25% over our current response time. And you would have to quantify, obviously, what that was. So the causes of the failure, the uncertainties are, first of all, what were the causes of the failure? There was some closed source components. They couldn't really determine what it was. They could hypothesize what it was. The next thing was how to develop appropriate test bed. And lastly, how to compensate for different caching techniques. Okay? Any one of those could form a basis of eligibility. The fact that you got three stacks set up, I have a real good feeling there's an eligible project at the end of the day. The first activity is we tried to benchmark the problem at 760 users. Okay? That creates all kinds of problems too. How do you get 760 people logging in all at the same time? Usually you have to start to put commercial data in there because they're not going to help you test it. They're going to use it for their business purposes, which creates issues. Hey, maybe my cost to put all that data in there is, is actually part of my testing. We then look at prototype tools for caching solutions. Talk to two different vendors, both who had to meet our standards. So we're constricted by standards. Maybe there's 12 different vendors, but only two of them we determined were feasible to meet the ultimate standards that we had to meet. So we had, again, more constraints, which were causing the problems. We looked at four different prototype architectures, all of which failed. So at this point, I have a real strong feeling. If stuff's failing, the explanation is why. Now, ultimately, we said that we had success via new techniques for disparate data normalization. And we had a 45% uh, percent increase in performance. So unexpected. Again, a good thing. What was the final result and what finally worked is less relevant again to me than what didn't work and why we wouldn't do that before or an explanation of why this was better than the other techniques and how we didn't know that at the start. Okay. Project number four is a very short one. Basically, we have a company that can compress maps. It can take a one meg map and put it down to 90K. However, we're told a competitor came out with a, with a better compression tool, and now they wanted to take these maps, the compression tool, and compress a one meg map to 30K with less than 2% <coughs> data loss over the existing performance. So they want to triple what they have. They can do it to 90K, and they want to get it down to 30K. The key issue is what if any architectures would accomplish this objective? Okay, We're told that they look at different prototype solutions. Again, the example here is very vague. I would say you would want to say 5, 50, 500, 7, 17, whatever prototype solutions. Because if the CRA says, well, you know, 50 hours per prototype solution looks good to me, and you have eight of them, 400 man hours seems reasonable. If they think 50 hours is reasonable and you have several, you can see what the problem is going to be on doing a desk review, so they're going to have to do a site visit to determine if you're eligible. Okay? They do a what if. If you looked on the internet and you found a solution, then that work would be ineligible. You just picked a product off the market, you plugged it in, and it worked. Okay? This happens a lot. And evaluating different products, which of these five products should I pick to plug in here, is not experimental development. That's market research. Where I take those products and say, there's shortcomings that I now have to improve this or make it fit, that's where the experimental development activity starts to 
Yes. 